Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today, Anas and I will be telling you about our top four favorite features that we've found in cars that we've driven over the past year. As you know, we drive yeah. pretty much one to two cars every week. And so in a year, we've driven a fair few number of cars. And today we'll be telling you our four favorite features that we've found over the past year. And I'm so, gonna start with yeah. a very simple one. A very like simple tick feature that I really loved and that I really want, but I know that I'm not gonna get. <laughs> and I have mentioned it in another video when we spoke about SUVs before, and it's that uh, MG RX8 wireless mirroring of your mobile phone on that touch screen. It's like we all know now cars uh, like since 2019 and now in 2020 uh, have Android uh, Auto and Apple CarPlay built into the infotainment system. And nowadays, I think people like it's a, it's a deal breaker for them if they see a car and it's like it doesn't have that, right? True. Because they want to use their apps through a, the infotainment of the car, the infotainment of the car and make it seamless to use like your music and your navigation, especially if you're used to uh, Google Maps and whatever, and you don't want to use that old, like uh, the navigation system, the em embedded navigation system in the car, because it's not really updated, it doesn't have everything. But here's the thing, MG solved that so brilliantly by just giving you wireless mirroring of your mobile phone on the touch screen. So you get exactly what you have on the phone on the touch screen and you can start uh, like using all the apps and moving the screen around directly from the touch screen, typing through the touch screen. So you can use any app you want. You can listen to music, use the Google Maps, watch a YouTube video, <laughs> browse your Facebook, your Instagram. And I think uh, that's why I'm not going to get it in the future, right, Zara? Yeah, because the, uh, you know, they have to comply and kind of understand safety regulations. And sooner or later, this feature is going to go away. So if you're yeah. one of the few to currently own an MG RX8, then you're probably holding on to something that we will not find anymore in vehicles. So Maybe in, in the near lucky. future. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? And that's, why, that's why they invented Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to begin with. To, Correct. But, you know, in, to in make it cars, safer for you to use, to use your apps in the car. Correct. But, I mean, like we've discussed in the previous video as well, right? Apple CarPlay and Android Auto both are very limited in their functionality. You really can't control more than your calling and probably just a few... Uh, yeah. You know, the WhatsApp, it reads it out to you and listen to music and things yeah. like that. Uh, whereas the MG one, it, you can do literally anything on your phone. And not and just without, that. without any wires. Yeah, I was just coming to that point with the ease of connectivity. Like in a few cars that we've tested when we are trying to connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it's not easy. Let's be honest. You have to plug it in. Then it says pair to Bluetooth. And then you're waiting. And you're like, I don't know. Is it, is it working? And then it disconnects halfway. Whereas in the MG, not only was it way simpler, with no cable, and it worked brilliantly. Yeah, because they're using Miracast, which is basically what you use to cast your phone to your TV. Yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. You go to the setting, you allow it, and you turn on Miracast, and you're done. It detects the screen, and you're just mirroring your uh, mobile phone on the screen. Uh, it was brilliant. It's a little yeah. thing that I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to disappear or you never know. Maybe they'll find the solution to make it happen, but with limited access to some stuff in the future. Awesome. But I just loved, loved that little tick feature in the MG RX8. And I think a very important thing to mention here is that if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, I think there's only one other brand that is doing uh, wireless sort of mirroring of wireless connectivity from your phone to the car screen. BMW. Which I think is BMW and it's only on Apple car Apple screen. phones, yes. And it's not just any BMW, I think it's like the high-end BMWs. 
So we're talking. Uh, I know it's in the like seven series. Exactly uh, the high end BMW. Yes. Whereas this MG is giving you that. Yeah, and it's only with with out. Apple. It's only yes. with Apple. Yes. It's only with Apple. It doesn't work with Android Auto yet. Uh, like the other thing like that is coming in the near future that uh, Volvo is working on with, uh, with uh, Google mm -hmm. is to have a uh, full native Android experience in the car. Correct. So meaning, meaning that there is no system built by Volvo for the car infotainment system. It's all Google. So Basically. once you step in the car, everything that's controlling all the infotainment system in the car is from Android. It's an Android experience. So even your inf information that's on the instrument cluster, it's from that same uh, same uh, OS. Correct. So it's basically like having an Android tablet uh, instead of as the screen controlling everything. Yes. So yeah. okay. Should we move on to our second favorite feature then? Yes. Yes. Of course. Okay. Our second favorite feature is. Uh, Tesla's vehicle detection system. Now, you're probably wondering what this is, but for those of you who have driven a Tesla or possibly even sat in a Tesla, when you've got the cruise control and the adaptive cruise control and all those systems on and working, um, it does this thing where on the instrument cluster between the dials and gauges and all of that, it shows you that you know there's a motorbike in front of you, there's a bus to your right, there's a pedestrian going to cross the road on the left, and you're probably thinking, yeah, well, what's the point? I can see it, my eyes are on the road. But here's what's impressive, because it gives us a glimpse into autonomous driving. Now, obviously, that's the big topic that everyone seems to be talking about and how cars are going to be driving themselves and cars are going to be communicating amongst themselves, informing each other, like, yo, there's an accident a kilometer away, so start slowing down. And, you know, this seems to be the next big thing in the automotive space. But what Tesla is doing is they're giving us a glimpse of that world right now with features like autopilot, where the car is yeah. driving itself, not just driving itself, but also aware of its surroundings, which I think is very, exactly. very impressive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to, to like add on, on this, because for a car to drive itself, like, of course, it needs a lot of tech. Yeah. And it needs to know its environment. It needs to understand that it's not just another vehicle in front of me, but I need to know what type of vehicle is in front of me, besides me, behind me. So it needs to know, is this like a truck, a big truck, an SUV, sure. a sedan, a motorbike, a, a guy on a bicycle. So yeah. it can actually like react up, up, uh, like in, in the right way. Yep. appropriately exactly in the right way towards whatever is coming ahead or on or on the side because it's going to be turning on its own it's going to be driving itself and just to do that like the model the tesla model x we drove just to to give us that differentiation it had eight different cameras <laughs> a front radar and 12 sensors around the car 12 different sensors just to give us that feature which is like detecting what type of vehicle is in front of you around you surrounding you yeah. and uh, like I, I really appreciated like that feature when when i saw it the first time on my screen it was like oh my god it can tell like forget about like okay the size of the of the thing like it knows if it's a bus it's a truck it's an suv it's yeah. a sedan, but then when a motorbike passed by and I saw a picture of a motorbike, it's like I was amazed. It's like <laughs> this thing is amazing and it's ready. You feel that the Tesla, like the Tesla Model X or Tesla cars in general, they're self driving ready, but they just need like rules and regulations to exactly. be legislation, yeah, set. Basically, you know, legislation to allow basically. To drive yeah. themselves. Because I mean, yeah. you know, now and again in the news, we'll read an article, well, not here, but like, you know, maybe in America and things like that, where the Tesla system malfunctions or so they claim, you know, like the driver's not going to be like, mm -hmm. oh no, because, you know, these systems right now, you could, I don't know if you'd call them, they're at a beta stage, but they're not perfect. And, you know, there've been these debates that are going on that, 
how does the car decide what to hit? You know, if it's put into like a situation where it has to run over a child or hit another car, which one should the car do? So there are a lot of things when it comes to self-driving and we're still a long way off, if you ask me, because yeah. we have yeah. a couple of things to iron out. But we're definitely... I on our way there. on the way on, on the way, way there, I, I think i think yeah i think um, like self driving to be as perfect as possible mm -hmm. and for us to accept it we have to reach a point where most if not all the cars on the road are self driving that's one yeah. and they're communicating with each other seamlessly so the car besides you or in front of you or even behind you by, let's say, 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers is, knows that you are there in front of me. What speed are you doing? Yeah. What, where you're headed? Well, are you going to take a turn? Are you uh, going to slow down? Are you going to accelerate? So they have to be communicating with each other so they can prepare the reactions beforehand. Correct. And then we will reach a stage where you're going to sit in a taxi and there's not even a steering wheel in sight. <laughs> That's, I think you, like when you know that they're all communicating with each other, you're going to have enough like confidence in the system that you will, you're going to just sit in the back and just enjoy the ride. True. I mean, it's a bit scary now. Scary or, you know, it's just something we need to get used to. Uh, you're always it's not scary. It's like uh, it's a weird feeling, exactly. especially for some, like for someone who, like for us, I think because we love to drive. Like for me, like personally, if I'm sitting in a passenger seat in any car, yeah, <laughs> I feel weird. <laughs> like I always like to be driving the car I'm in. Yes. So so like imagine you're there and the steering wheel is just moving on its own. That. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a weird feeling for me personally. And I know it's for a lot of people, but like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get used to this. Yeah, I mean, I think people now are used to the whole point, the idea of like uh, pushing a button and the car just parks itself. It's the same thing. Correct. Correct. You're going to just push a button, tell it where to go, and it's just going to go there. We've well, we seen videos of that years ago, but I, I don't know. I, can any car actually still do that? There but, was. Yeah, yeah. Now, now they're testing it in the US. They're testing like uh, uh, self-driving, uh, like Uber services and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I even saw the funniest video is like Domino's Pizza was testing out uh, the self-driving cars. No, ah. not drones. Self-driving cars for delivery. Okay. So the car just comes to your house, yeah. you punch in a code on a screen mm -hmm. on besides the window, the car unlocks the window or opens the window and just you pick up your pizza and <laughs> uh, it just goes on, on to the next place. <laughs> <laughs> so the, there are a lot of like things being tested, but yeah, it's going to take a while for us to see it at least in our region, it's going to take uh, a bit of a while. But still, like, it's amazing to get a autopilot like the one in the Tesla Model X. Agree. Couldn't agree more. In fact, the next feature that we want to talk about is, you could say, closely related to the Tesla's Model X vehicle detection. And it's because it's called Honda Sensing. And yes. I need to be specific. It's the Honda Sensing on the new Accord. Because we did drive um, the Honda Pilot, which, as you know, is... Uh, a slightly older model compared to the, the new Accord, which also has Honda Sensing, but that's like the previous generation of Honda Sensing. So it's not as good. Yeah. If you want to experience yes. the Honda Sensing that both Anas and I fell in love with as soon as we had the opportunity to drive the new Accord, then you need to sit in the new Accord and experience it. So yeah. to give you an idea of what Honda Sensing is and why we loved it, well, you know, Many cars nowadays come with cruise control and adaptive cruise control and lane keeping and all these uh, sensors and technologies that basically on a highway, uh, you set your speed, set the distance you want to maintain from the car in front of you, and the car will stay within the lane. It can manage like small turns on the highway and things like that. But 
we tested this system, you could say like this sort of, you know, I think it's called autonomous driving stage two, if I'm not mistaken, where it maintains the speed and the lane and things like that. In cars such as Mercedes and BMWs, and it works well. I mean, uh, unless you remember the time you drove it, uh, we were filming in Sharjah, and then we got kicked out of there. Yes. We had to go back to San <laughs> I was going to mention okay. that example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we got, we got stuck in traffic, and I thought to myself, okay, this is the best time to test this uh, thing out, and I just turned off, turned on, sorry, all the assistant yeah. that that Mercedes um, E-Class, was it? The E-Class e had. Coupe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah the E-Class Coupe had. And oh my God, it's just, it was a lifesaver because I didn't want to like get stuck in traffic and just move slowly. It did everything for me. It was just moving with the traffic, stopping with the traffic, like keeping the lane perfectly. Yeah. Uh, everything w was so smooth. And of course it keeps like that safe distance for you. Correct. So you don't feel anxious or, or anything. So, and it was so seamless and it just like, made that uh, traffic jam just go away like a bearable. breeze. Like it's, <laughs> it made yes. it <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, back to Honda Sensing. Like I was saying earlier, I mean, we've tested, you know, cars that pretty much are capable of driving themselves. And yeah, yeah, we can mention the BMW. Tesla Model X, the Tesla BMW Model X. 7 Series, yeah. Yeah, but these are expensive cars. What yep. makes Honda Sensing so impressive? is that the technology is brilliant. I mean, it is actually comparable to those cars, to the Mercedes and the BMWs. Yeah. The technology itself is brilliant. It works really well. And not just Seamlessly. That, seamless. And it's only at 120,000 dirhams. There is yep. no other car in the market. No. And I am sure about this. At 120,000 dirhams, that will give you that. Uh, we have a full video on our YouTube channel just showing how Honda just about Sensing that. works. Yeah. We've done, I think, two videos about Honda Sensing, if I'm not mistaken. I think. I, I think, think we've done two because that's how impressed we are with it. One wasn't enough. We, we, did a one, uh, we, we did one where it was a full video about Honda Sensing explaining everything about it. Exactly. But again, like, I, I agree with you. Like, I don't know why Honda doesn't, like, fill all of its marketing regarding the accord with Honda Sensing. It should be all just about Honda Sensing. I agree. Because if you look, let's look at the competition, like mm -hmm. all the cars that compete with, with the accord in this price range. You yeah. get the Altima, doesn't have it. You get the Camry, doesn't have, they, they do have adaptive cruise control. Don't, mis yeah. don't like understand me wrong. They have adaptive cruise control. They have some sorts of lane keeping assistant, but they don't have these systems working together like Honda Sensing does. Yeah. What Honda That's Sensing is it. that it took, it took all of these systems separately and it made them connected. So you can get the seamless highway experience where you just turn it on and the car is driving itself. Every 30 seconds you get a warning light or a warning beep. You can just touch the steering wheel for like a second and just leave it and let it go. And it worked seamlessly, seamlessly. Like I was so impressed that I actually showed it to my dad because <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show him the future of like motoring and whatever. And he, he actually, like, the, the first time I let go, he was a bit of anxious. He's like, are you sure? Yeah. And then he was like, oh, this is really impressive when he saw how the car is slowing down and like how it's like turning with the highway. Correct. He was really, really impressed. Again, I was impressed because I knew that I was in a car that anyone can afford. Yes. Correct. It's just 120,000 dirhams. It's a sedan that everybody knows and everybody like trusts and everybody can actually afford. I mean, like you rightly said, it, it honestly is like a missed opportunity on the marketing front, if you ask me. Yeah. We've seen billboards on Sheikh Zayed Road with the Nissan Altimas promoting that adaptive cruise control. And control. You, you look at it yeah. and you're like, why? What is Honda doing? You know, like their system is a lot better. A lot, a lot more rounded. Better. A lot yes, more rounded. Like yes. you said, you know, 
all those systems, yeah, another car might have them, but they're not connected as well. They don't communicate with one another. So they're not yeah. really sure what the other one is doing. And yes, in the, in the Honda Accord, it just all comes together. You drive that thing and you're like, wow, this is really good and definitely worth more than 120000 Definitely, definitely. <laughs> anyway, do you want to go that, ahead with the last feature? Yes, and we, we're keep, keeping the best for last because <laughs> this feature is uh, more about like driving <laughs> than anything else. So this year we had the opportunity to drive the Lamborghini Huracan Evo and it's just, it impressed us so, so much. The way that car is managed to like combine craziness <laughs> with an insanity with such control over the driving experience is absolutely amazing. And that's all because of one thing. And that thing is called LDVI. Go ahead. Do you want so to tell them what the full form is? <laughs> but yes, and, and butcher it in Italian again. So basically, LDVI is Lamborghini Dynamica Veicolo Integrata. I hope I read that correctly in Italian. <laughs> but uh, to, to, like, to make you understand what it is, basically, it's just a supercomputer that's in the car that is controlling a lot of systems that have to do with driving the car. So Zaran, why don't you mention the first system that LDVI controls? So the first system is, all -wheel, is the all-wheel drive system with torque vectoring. What it does is the system monitors how much power and torque is going to each wheel, which basically means it will limit slip, but it also allows you to enter a turn very fast and exit it even faster. And believe me, it is super fast in corners. <laughs> and the second thing I want to talk about and the system I want to talk about is all-wheel steering system. So the all-wheel steering system basically is just like that you can control the angle, not just of the front wheels, but also the back wheels. And of course, the car controls that and pushes those rear wheels in different angles according to the need of the situation. So uh, it depends on like if you're turning at a certain speed, the angle of the rear wheels will be different, so you get more control, again, entering and through the corner and exiting the corner. Yeah. To add to that, we have the... Lamborghini Dynamic Steering. So basically, that is like... The thing you feel in a lot of cars where the weight of the steering wheel, of course, changes with the speed you're driving in or how much angle you give it. But here, it's a full dynamic system that exactly knows how much variable ratio should it engage while you're turning the car. And we're yeah. talking about like minute changes to perfect every corner you're in. Added to that, we have another system. It's the magnetic ride control, which is basically your magnetic suspension that changes the stiffness of, of the suspension and the air shocks again by the sensors giving it information and reading uh, whatever is happening on the road so essentially like you saw all of these systems and even more um, of course it's going to control like the sensitivity of the throttle i don't know what how much fuel is going into the engine blah 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 all of these systems is controlled by ldvi and it's not just controlled by LDVI. LDVI is like taking every information that these systems are pushing into it and then trying to order them to do all of that in 20 milliseconds of time. Yeah, that's the impressive part. I mean, you know, most people will not feel these things when you're driving. You, you don't even realize that all these things are working underneath you and the car is doing all these things just so that you can have the best time of your life driving when you're there. Yes. But what's, what's really impressive is, like you said, 20 milliseconds. It does all these calculations and adjustments, the suspension, the steering, the throttle, the brakes, the fuel, everything in 20 milliseconds. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so fast that Lamborghini doesn't call this feedback anymore. They call it feed forward, meaning that let's say you're gonna, you enter the corner and in the next second, you need a different uh, settings for all of these like systems, right? Yeah. It will know that in the next second or the next two seconds, I need to be in those settings. And in 20 milliseconds, it will change everything. So you would like look like a brilliant race, <laughs> racing driver <laughs> while you're turning into that corner. Like that car made me feel so much like confidence in driving it that you, you know when you drive any car you, and you push it around the corner, you, the first thing you want to look for is the limit, right? You yeah. want to look for that limit that the car can handle around the corner. And once you find that limit, that sweet spot, خلص, you know that I'm going to throw it at this speed, at this angle, and it's going to handle it. With the Lamborghini, the with the Lamborghini, the, the limit is like, it's like, it's endless. Like, I couldn't even find the limit. That's what I was coming to. I was going to stop you there and say, I don't think it's the limit of the car. It's the limit of the driver. Because sometimes you, you can push yes. a car into a corner. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name the Challenger Hellcat for this. And, and honestly, you as a driver don't want to push it more than 80 into a corner. Because as soon as you do, those rear wheels just slide out from underneath you. And the next thing you know, you're facing the wrong way around. So, yeah. You know, there's cars that scare you, that don't uh, yeah. make you feel comfortable when you drive them fast and especially on a bend. Whereas in the Lamborghini, yeah. it might be because of the all-wheel drive and all-wheel steering and all these systems working together with LTVI that just give you so much confidence that, sure, you know at the back of your head that, listen, I don't want to wreck this thing. It costs over a million dirhams. But <laughs> when you Actually, do, what? 1.3 million dirhams 1. to be exact. 1.3 million dirhams. Yeah. So, you know, that's still at the back of your mind going like, don't wreck it, don't wreck it, don't wreck it. But you, yeah, yeah, but still, you take it really fast into corners without having that fear that, you know, this thing is going to be pointing the other way around when I'm out of the corner. No, no, it's, it's, it's all about like, I know some people say, yeah, but it's fun throwing a Dodge Challenger or a, I don't know, a Mustang or a Hellcat sideways in a corner. Yep. But here we're talking about like accuracy and precision. Exactly. Like what they wanted you to do is like go to a track and just destroy any record time you've ever done before on that track Correct. with this car. Uh, and like if you want to have fun, you can just put it in a different setting and the car will start sliding. It's not like they stopped you from doing that. But like the impressive part is like, so much precision and so much control that's coming out of the system and what's even more impressive is like zaran said you don't even feel that it's there yeah because sometimes some uh like some systems you feel that they're like doing something like the traction control is on uh, it's braking on your behalf it's slowing down the car Correct. here in the lamborghini you feel that you are doing all of these things, but you're not. <laughs> they it, know doesn't interrupt, it doesn't interrupt the experience. Let's say that's, that. That's what they give you for paying 1.3 million. They're like, it's okay, okay, brush his exactly. ego a little bit. Make him feel like he's the best driver in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, like, uh, uh, like Ferraris and uh, other like McLarens, I'm sure they have the same, the same, like, systems but like the lamborghini also has this insanity about it right correct i mean you know the ferraris are just as fast maybe the r8s are just as fast and it, it's more than just the speed or the performance it's more about the the show the extravagance like you know i mm. think we, we can both agree that there is no car that will give you as much attention as a Lamborghini. And it's not just the styling, it's everything about it. It's the styling, it's the sound of it. Ferraris are, are, are dignified, you know. They, they have the power. They're elegant, elegant. Yeah, they're, they're elegant. They're like, we don't want to show off too much. Yeah. But a Lamborghini has that show off factor into it. And, you know, initially, I'll admit, I wasn't really up for it. I was like, yeah, that's a show off scar. But after driving it, <laughs> And putting it into, I think it was called, what, Strada? No, 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 Corsa. Corsa was yeah. in track mode. 
course. Yeah. yeah. Around our office area where there's like speed breakers every 200 meters, we were not even going fast and that exhaust system is just like popping away at the back and you're like, yeah. how I know why everyone shows up in these things because they're just so much fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I meant. And then take it to a track, LDVI does its magic and you're just enjoying like, breaking every record on the track correct correct and you know I, I think for me the biggest learning that came out i mean you know for those who follow our channel closely will know that the hurricane evo was the first lamborghini we ever tested we've driven quite a few ferraris before that but it was the first lamborghini yeah. we ever tested and many people think of you need to choose a side either Lamborghini or Ferrari. It's kind of like Coke or Pepsi, but it, it really isn't because they're just so different. They're, they're just as fast and just as expensive, but when you actually drive them both, you understand that you can't really choose because they're very different cars at the end of the day. Yeah, I think every car in its own, has its own personality and has its own appeal. Yeah. But I, I enjoy to tell you the truth, I enjoy the, the pinnacle of engineering that they give us, both of them. True, true. Because, uh, again, at 1.3 million dirhams, uh, you, you should expect to be given the pinnacle <laughs> of engineering Ferrari or Lamborghini can, can offer. And I got to tell you guys, uh, what an experience. Like if there is any other car that gave me such confidence in driving it, but minus the insanity, I think it was the Nissan GTR. Yeah, I've only driven a GTR on track one, and it, it wasn't a whole lot of fun because you have the instructors next to you who are like, "Slow down, oh, okay. brake, brake, brake! No, don't accelerate through the corner." So it was no, the G, the <laughs> GTR gives you the same amount of confidence. Yeah. But again, minus, minus the insanity that's provided by the, <laughs> the Lamborghini experience. Because again, it has almost the same amounts of like systems working and or maybe. Uh, quickly yeah. adjusting. Yeah, maybe more Japanese, you know. Them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's a video game basically inside the GTR. <laughs> and anyway. uh, yeah, that's, that's it for our episode today. Yeah. 